Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. This is Coffee with a Ranger. I am Jessica Barnes Green. I am the director of Outer Banks Forever, and we are the nonprofit partner of your Cape Hatteras National Seashore, Wright Brothers National Memorial, and Fort Raleigh National Historic Site. And we are excited to be joined here today by Amy. Amy is the lead interpretive ranger at Wright Brothers National Memorial. And as you can see, she's got the beautiful memorial right in the background. So it's a lovely day to be out in your OBX National Parks. We are talking today mostly about uh, National Aviation Day, which we celebrated uh, last week. And so this month is really a full celebration of the legacy of the Wright Brothers, um, the innovations of aviation and how that has changed our world really in the past century specifically. Uh, but today is actually another really exciting holiday, if you will, for the National Park Service. So today is the National Park Service's birthday. So happy birthday, National Parks. Yeah, so we thought today would be a good day to hop on and just talk a little bit more about the legacy of the, of the Wright brothers and some of the fun things that are going on at the park. So Amy, do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your work in the National Parks? Sure. Uh, my name is Amy Ginever. I'm a ranger here at Wright Brothers. Um, so what I do here is I'm an interpretive ranger. So I tell stories. I get to tell the story about the Wright Brothers and um, connect visitors. I get to listen to their stories because a lot of people are very inspired when they come here. They could be pilots or they could be dreaming of becoming a pilot. Aviation is just uh, something that they um, it is something that they're um, are excited about. So I love that I'm here and I get to share that story. I'm also uh, working here. I'm also the volunteer supervisor. So uh, here we are so lucky we have 13 volunteers. They don't work all at the same day, all on the same day. They work, you know, in shifts and all throughout the week. And some of them even come here in the summertime because they have a summertime house uh, and volunteer with us in the summertime and go off home uh, in the wintertime. Um, I love... <laughs> I love being an interpretive ranger because I get to share this place, these beautiful places, and I haven't just been here, but these beautiful places with, um, with you. Um, and I think that is amazing because it is, it connects, um, it connects, uh, the stories that happen here and maybe even inspire stories for the visitor, which is really, really great. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I know I've gotten to attend a couple of your programs, so I know that, um, so giving actual programs is a part of your job, and like you said, yeah. um, managing volunteers, which are such an important part. Um, folks, if you've ever been to the Wright Brothers Visitor Center, you probably have interacted with some of the amazing volunteers that help out in the Visitor Center, which is awesome. So, Amy, I know that um, your sort of love of aviation and your uh, history with the Park Service goes a little further than just here at Wright Brothers. So can you tell us a little bit about the other parks that you've worked in? Oh, absolutely. So uh, amazingly enough, um, I got into the Park Service a little bit later in life, but um, I've absolutely loved the parks my whole entire life. Uh, I started on Canyonlands in Southeast Utah. So uh, like in the desert, um, I've been down to South Florida, went from the desert to the swamps in Big Cypress and started doing swamp walks down there. Uh, I loved it. Um, I've been to New River Gorge. I've worked there uh, before it was a national park and now it is. So happy for that. Um, Black Canyon of the Gunnison in Colorado, and then uh, the park that I, that I came from when I got here was Dayton Aviation Heritage National Historical Park, the other park that talks about the Wright Brothers. And so it gives me a unique opportunity to, uh, especially being here in North Carolina, to tell the entire story. I have got to tell the entire story of the Wright Brothers. It started out in Dayton. They have their bicycle shop, their print business there, the field they fly in after they leave here. So I've gotten the full, full around experience. And then of course, where first flight happened here. So I love it. And I love to connect people with that because a lot of people think that there is this ongoing um, um, conflict between North Carolina and Dayton. And that's not the case. Actually, we are trying to connect these two places. And there is the, it's called the, um, what is it called, Jess? The right route. Yeah, it's a the new right route. initiative that we're doing with Dayton. 
Absolutely. And so it is this, this right route actually goes along the path that um, Wilbur initially took. And then of course, Orville followed along, but initially took to get here to North Carolina. And, um, and it connects our parks because there is no conflict. Dayton is the birthplace of aviation and North Carolina is first in flight. We know this and we don't want to have that conflict. We want to connect these places and we want you to enjoy these places. Yeah, that's been a really exciting project to work on. So we came up with the idea of the right route. So to your point, there's no rivalry between our parks. We, we love Dayton. Dayton loves North Carolina, loves the Outer Banks. And so it was really exciting because uh, a couple of groups, so Outer Banks Forever being the nonprofit partner of Wright Brothers, um, the National Aviation Heritage Area, which is the nonprofit partner of the Dayton Aviation Park Parks, and then uh, First Flight Society, which is also based here in North Carolina in the Outer Banks. Uh, we kind of came together and we started to have these conversations about how we could better work together and to your point, tell the story, the really the complete story and kind of put that rivalry myth to rest. And so that's been really fun. Those conversations really led to us doing um, our December 17th, which is the anniversary of the first flight event together with Ohio. So we live streamed those two together and we'll probably do that again this year because that was really successful. And we started to talk about to your point, how do we better connect those stories? So the right route is gonna launch hopefully in the next couple of days. So folks to just stay tuned. Um, you'll hear some more information about that. But like Amy said, it's really a way for us to connect the story um, to promote tourism to both parks too. So like Amy said, well, we have basically mapped out the route that the Wright brothers took to get from Dayton to, to the Outer Banks. At the, that point in time, it's called Kitty Hawk. We know that it's now Kill Devil Hill, uh, but um, and, and we're going to highlight a couple of spots on the way that are that are might be points of interest to people who are really excited and interested in the story of aviation. So very excited to, to launch that later this month. Um, so we talked about uh, last week we celebrated National Aviation Day and a lot of what we talk about is, you know, the Wright brothers legacy of making the impossible possible. So what do you think that their legacy and their innovation really means to us today. Um, I, I oftentimes talk about this in, in my programs, and I think um, it's, it's amazing because Wilbur and Orville, I mean, they were steadfast in their determination to, to make flight possible, to, to uh, achieve their dream, right? And when they did that, they opened, as, as soon as they did it, they opened the skies for possibilities for anybody to think about what flight would mean to them. So it didn't just have to be regular flight. It could be something else. Um, and we have done that. We have done that. I mean, like, we all, we always say like 66 years from the day that from the time that they flew 66 years later we were on the moon we were on the moon which is amazing and that is a different way of flying that's taking us into outer space and another thing so like this year um uh, if you've heard of the mars rover ingenuity right so we, we even kind of play on that ingenuity um when they flew when they flew that that helicopter in which they didn't even think it was going to happen because the atmosphere was so thin but when, when they flew it and it landed, they named that field Wright Brothers Field. So that means that their legacy is continuing on. It's always going to continue on because, because of what they started and what we can accomplish. I think that is, uh, it, it, it's just whatever you can imagine is, is possible, really. Yeah, I love that connection. Uh, you know, we were all, um, both us at Outer Banks Forever and you guys at the park were kind of watching to see how the whole uh, Mars rover landing was going to work and if it was going to work and um, when they named it Wright Brothers Field I think we all just it was just a moment where you have to step back and remember this is the place that you and I get to get the privilege to work in every single day so if you don't know the Outer Banks Forever office is actually in Wright Brothers National Memorial so I am in the park with Amy quite a bit and it, it was just it was a very um, full circle moment and it was something that again we've talked about that legacy of the Wright Brothers and and how amazing it is that, yeah, the first time they took off from the ground, 66 years later, they landed on the moon. Um, it, it's just an amazing acceleration of innovation. And I think that, that that launch point is just, that's important. And that's what we talk about a lot at the park. I know that's a lot of what you guys talk about is what led up to them actually being able to take flight and then what happened right after that. Um, and another exciting project that we are working on um, with you guys is the Aviation Trail Through Time. So we're really hoping to take this story, just what Amy's talking about, and really bring that into the park. Because 
If you've been to Wright Brothers in the past few years, they did this beautiful renovation of the visitor center, right? So the, the new visitor center opened, I guess, three years ago now. It feels like it wasn't that long ago, but, um, and they just do such a great job of telling that story to your point of what happened in Dayton, what happened leading up to them coming here, what happened once they were here, what life was like in the Outer Banks at that time, which is very different than the life we know here now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and so the aviation, <clears throat> excuse me, I have to check on my coffee. Now, do we notice right. <laughs> my coffee mug today is not Wright Brothers themed, I will say. Sorry about that, but Lighthouse themed. Um, but the Aviation Trail Through Time is an exciting project that we are raising funds for right now. And really what it will be is um, an extension of the amazing work that you guys have done in the visitor center out into the park. So starting at the first flight, Boulder, we're going to put new education materials and signs and things in there that will tell the story of how we got so quickly from that first flight to the Mars Ingenuity. So I'm really excited to work on that project with you guys and um, folks that are listening, you'll hear more about that probably in the coming months and ways that you can support that project. So the Wright brothers, you know, they were really visionaries, like we've talked about. So how do you see innovation happening in our world? And how do you see really that their innovation is inspiring folks when they come to the parks today? I think, I think uh, nowadays innovation, uh, we are coming up with new and uh, different ways of doing everything, right? So um, Wilbur and Orville, I, I love that you know, their innovation, uh, uh, what they accomplished and what they were able to accomplish. And, and, it, and it does have to do with um, uh, where they came from because there was a lot of innovation going on in Dayton at the time, but also they had a supportive family, right? Um, and, and so they were able to, to concentrate on flight and be innovative. And I think, I think times now, I mean, we've mentioned the Mars Rover in different, different ways that we come up with flight and being, um, you know, uh, innovative, um, but like with COVID time. So we are doing something very different, Jess. I mean, we're meeting virtually. That's being innovative. That is actually taking uh, something that we would normally do in person. And now we're able to, we're able to do it via a, a phone or an iPad or, you know, a, a camera, but um, we are able to reach more folks this way as well. So, I mean, we've had like, as soon as this happened, you have to get really quick in, in your knowledge and, and learning things. So I think um, I, th I think that's a big thing about innovation is, is looking at something that is what, what we would normally do and coming up with a new way of doing that. And I mean, we're doing that with um, the people that come here. I love it. I did a program and, and I had a little girl that was hmm, maybe eight years old. And she told me uh, when, 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 we, when I ask about, you know, what your dreams are, her dream is to um, be on Mars. She wants to be one of the first female, female astronauts on Mars. Right. Oh, and, so and I think, I think because she's thinking at, and, and being innovative and thinking at that young age and being allowed to think like that, being allowed to think beyond just a, um, whatever is normal and, and uh, just like, I think it is, I've got an airplane overhead. We get airplanes all the time. But I think also, even in the things, the everyday things that we're doing right now, we, a normal job, you know, we're, do, we're able to do this from our homes. Um, things that we would assume that are normal jobs, like dog walking, it's becoming a normal job. I mean, all of these things are innovative because they're using everyday things that we do and um, we're doing them differently now and we're and and they're meaningful to us. So I think that's another thing about innovation is that it becomes meaningful to you uh, and, and, and that kind of like creates innovation too. So if, if you want to do something that you really love and become innovative about it. And I like what you said too, because it kind of always I think surprises people when they see, when they come to the visitor center for the first time and they see the replica of the flyer. It was very simple. It was not a complicated machine. We think of airplanes now and you, obviously any type of spacecraft as being entire, you know, very complicated. It takes very intense, um, intricate engineering to make those things fly. But what they started with was very simple. I mean, it's a glider with a motor on it. It's really not that complicated. And the motor's not that complicated, you know, especially compared to motors that we know today. 
And they really were able to, to your point, just <clears throat> find the simple everyday things and make that into something special. And then that just accelerated the innovation from there because once they were able to do it, once they proved that this thing that we thought was impossible was possible, then every, you know so many more people were inspired to say, well, what else could we do? What else could be next? And I think to your point, um, that's a lot of what we're seeing right now. And I love hearing that story. And I love getting to, I know you get to interact with visitors every day and hear those inspiring stories, um, particularly from kids who just really, you know, this story happened over a hundred years ago. And the fact that it's still inspiring them today, I think is really what's important about our park. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you. Um, we'll get visitors here that are, are um, they're pilots and, or, or they want to be pilots, right? So this is their first time coming here, or this is a destination. This is a place that, you know, on their bucket list that they have to be here. Pilots fly in because we have the airstrip. They fly in because mm -hmm. they fly where Wilbur Norval flew. And I think um, uh, it is so inspiring. People, some people, they'll come here for the very first time, but some people come year after year after year because they love this story and they love this inspiration. Yeah, I think that is one of the more fun things about, so my office being at Wright Brothers and getting to be in the park, but I also, so I'm coming to you today from my home office, uh, which is actually right behind the park, so I don't live very far from there, and the flyovers. So we have planes constantly, planes, whether that's, you know, personal planes, uh, military flyovers, helicopters, all the time. And I think, I just, I love that, that pilots, you know, today still have such a connection to the Wright Brothers story that they feel like they have to fly. If they're coming anywhere near the Outer Banks, they have to fly over the monument. And it's, it's a really fun piece, I think, too, about walking in the park is you just never know what type of aircraft is going to fly over and that you'll get to kind of experience. And I think, again, it goes back to um, you know, you just, you see this very simple flyer in the visitor center, and then you walk out to the monument and you might see, you know, a military jet or a personal, you know, plane that's flying over and just, it's amazing how far we've come in just a very short amount of time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of on a personal note, um, how has the story of the Wright brothers kind of impacted your own life, especially now that you've worked at both Dayton and... Wright Brothers National Memorial? I, well, their story has impacted me uh, quite a bit because uh, I started out volunteering at uh, in Dayton um, because I've lived there. It's a, it's a, uh, all my life is a long story, but uh, <laughs> I lived in Dayton before I started the park service, but I started volunteering at, uh, in Dayton um, before I started the park service. And then I got my, um, and then I got my first seasonal job, but then my very first permanent job was uh, Park Service 100th anniversary, 2016. <laughs> oh, yeah, was a big year. <laughs> I got my very first Park Service job in Dayton. So that was my permanent job. So the connection there to Wright Brothers is always going to be a very personal one to me, but also because, um, um, and, and more recently, uh, I've been thinking about their family and how they were so supportive. And, and I have to think about um, not only like this place, because um, I absolutely love this place, but this place in, um, in the whole um, context of all of our parks here in the Outer Banks, which I have to tell you, so we're, we're a group of three parks, right, um, that mm -hmm. we're managing. Uh, so it's Wright Brothers, Fort Raleigh, and Cape Hatteras. And, and I love that I get to work with each one of those folks because we're not just insular. We're not just the Wright Brothers, and this is all we deal with. We get to work with those other parks. I mean, I get to talk to the interp rangers at, all, at Fort Raleigh and at Cape Hatteras, and we brainstorm, and, and we work together. And, and if I need something, all I have to do is pick up the phone, and, and it's the same way. And I think that it's the family that we are in, and, and that's why I, I related back to Wilbur Norville's family, because, I mean, it was, family was, the, was what meant, what was so great about their success. And I think uh, in my success here, I think this whole family has been so really uh, very important for me. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, being the friends group of three parks, I think has been, not only is it exciting because the parks are very different, but the stories also do overlap. I mean, you think about, when you think about innovation, I mean, Fort Raleigh, you know, that may not be the word that comes to mind first, but to imagine that the first English colony, so the first, you know, English settlement that was here in, in America, 
that was innovation. They didn't know what they were doing. They had to, you know, just sort of kind of go on um, just hope and figure out if this is something that we can do, can we make this viable? And so learning about that story and learning how they interacted with the people here. And um, I think that's just an important part of that story. And then also Fort Raleigh, a lot of people don't know this or are just learning about the story of the Freedmen's Colony, which was an innovation at, in itself. So there was a Freedmen's Colony at Fort Raleigh um, after the Civil War, war where uh, freed enslaved folks could come and build a, a new life after the Civil War. And that's innovation in itself. And so, and then of course at Cape Hatteras, I think anytime I think of innovative things, the lighthouse always comes to mind again, representing our lighthouses today. Uh, so I think that there is such a tie between the three parks, even though we think of them as being very different places and experiences. Um, I love that, that you feel like that the, there's that family feeling, which I feel um, we, we are just grateful to be a part of really and help you guys to be able to tell that story and, and enhance the park. So that's great. So um, tell us a little bit, you, you've touched on this a little bit, but what do you enjoy most about working in the national parks? <laughs> um, so when I first started out in the parks, I absolutely loved, so I started out in Canyonland. So I got to hike for my job, which was really awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I, Amy, I can I can second that one because before I worked here, I worked at the Shenandoah National Park Trust, which means I also got to hike for my job, which was great. Yeah, <laughs> I can't so, beat that. <laughs> I cannot tell you enough about being uh, one of the absolute favorite things about my job is that I get to protect these places, right? So I get to, I mean, and, and anybody I work with, any other park ranger will tell you the same thing. This is what we love. This is why we do it because these beautiful places um, we get to protect, but we also get to share them. And, and I think um, um, it's, it's like with that, that first time visitor, right? Um, they, you get to share the story, but I guess the best part I get from it is that um, when they share their story with me, Right. So so I can talk to them and I can tell them all about the Wright brothers and they can be inspired. But what is the best part is the inspiration that I get from them when they tell me a personal story about maybe the first time they visited or the first time they flew or whatever it was. Um, I think that is so great because it, and it's so great for all of us. Uh, I can't even begin to tell you like every day um, somebody, a ranger will come into the, we, our office and, and they'll go, okay, you know what, this is what I heard today. And, mm -hmm. and so we're always sharing these stories. And so we're always inspired by the visitors. Um, and I, and, and um, that is to me, the, the best part about this job. It really is. It's, it's uh, sharing the story, but also being in these beautiful places. <laughs> I'm really, really lucky. Yeah, so on that note, when you're not in uniform with your lovely hat on, I know it's a hot day out today, so I always feel for you guys on these summer days. Um, what is one of your favorite ways to enjoy your parks here in the Outer Banks? Uh, okay, so here in the Outer Banks, um, <laughs> I would say walk up that hill, but no, I don't, really like, <laughs> I don't like doing it for work, and I really don't like doing it for, for pleasure, but um, I have to say the, the visitor center here uh, has been remodeled in 2018 and it is well done. Um, I love to, I, and I can go back there and I can keep reading these exhibits and learn something new every single time. Mm -hmm. um, just exploring every little aspect of the park that I don't know about. And if I know everything about Wright Brothers, I'm going over to Fort Raleigh and I'm learning about the Freedmen's Colony. And, and, and I love the programs because the Rangers put so much work into trying to, um, make those stories not only interesting, but um, come alive, right? Come alive so you can feel what it was like being there and also being in that place. So exploring Fort Raleigh and the earthen forts and then, um, oh my gosh, Cape Hatteras. I didn't even realize they had trails. So I go and hike on the trails and, and yeah. you know, mm -hmm. that's just all just in lighthouses. There's all kinds of history there. Um, um, and and uh, I think um, for me, it's the ranger programs because there's so many and and every single one of them, if it's a, you're going to get a different story from every single different ranger. Yeah. So, so that's one thing that I absolutely love to do. Yeah. I have to say the ranger programs, you know, like I said, I've gotten to go to a couple of yours before and I, I've been to a few at every park and I still Every summer, I feel like, especially if we have new seasonal rangers that come in, I want to go and hear the story again, because like I said, everyone puts their own sort of um, personal touch to it and can bring a different aspect of the story out. So I think that's a great thing to do. And 
Um, so uh, we keep a calendar on our website. But it's also on each of the parks websites, which are linked from Outer Banks, from obxforever.org. Um, we keep a schedule of those programs up to date so that people can easily find how to come and see you guys anytime. Absolutely. And please come today because, hello, it is the Park Service's birthday and we are free. <laughs> it's a fee free day. That's exciting. Yeah. So I'm sure you guys will have a, a lot of people there today. It does feel like visitation is slowing down a little bit, but not as much as we're used to this time of year, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't quite had that drop off just yet. So we'll see how that goes. True. Well, Amy, so is there anything else you want to share with us today as we talk about, you know, today's the, the Park Service's birthday, which is exciting. This is Aviation Month. We just celebrated National Aviation Day. Is there anything else you want to share with uh, folks watching us today? Um, well, first off, just be careful because it is hot. <laughs> now that that is that's yeah. gonna be my message because it is super hot and and uh, there's not a lot of wind. So just be careful in that. But please come. Um, it is um, a fee-free day for all national parks, right? So, um, so you can come in here and you can come see us for free. You can go to Fort Raleigh for free anytime and also Cape Hadras anytime. Um, I think, uh, I think um, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful that I get to be here in the Outer Banks. And, and also um, one thing else, one thing I wanted to mention also, and I know we're, we're celebrating aviation and all of that and, and, and being here at Wright Brothers, uh, <laughs> you know, everybody thinks about that. Um, but here in the Outer Banks, we have quite a few other places that you can visit and fly kites at, uh, you know, and, and I, um, and so the Outer Banks, I love this place because we are such a community, even though we're a little thin ribbon of barrier islands, we're a community. So, I mean, Jockey's Ridge, you could go fly kites or even do gliding um, lessons over there at Jockey's Ridge State Park and, and learn about the lifesavers at Chickamacomico. Um, and uh, try to say that, they teach you. <laughs> they teach you. That one. But, yeah, but I can see the birds. <laughs> So, so uh, enjoy the parks, but also enjoy all the other places that are here in the Outer Banks. Yeah, that's great, Amy. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And speaking of just experiencing uh, all of our parks, uh, it, folks, if you are on Facebook this evening, we are actually working with Amy's colleagues down at Cape Hatteras National Seashore and the Outer Banks Visitors Bureau, and we will have a live sea turtle nest excavation Ooh, yeah. tonight at 7 p.m., uh, so we, um, the, the park service does this after the sea turtle nest hatches. That's how they learn about them is that they dig them up and they count how many eggs hatched. And every once in a while, we find some live baby sea turtles that hadn't quite made it out of the nest. So um, I can, I can kind of tell you that that might be part of what we're doing tonight if you want to see some baby sea turtles. So come back here to our page, um, our Facebook page this evening, and uh, we'll have some more exciting Outer Banks National Park uh, insights for you. So thank you so much, Amy, for joining us today. Um, I know I'm sure I will see you soon. We'll be talking more about the right route coming up. And uh, we just appreciate you being with us this morning. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thanks, Amy.